let's look at the real use of the transistor now beyond sort of analyzing the currents that flow in the collector emitter versus say base branch with the LEDs the way we did in previous videos. What we're going to do is as follows here. We're going to remove the LEDs as our test devices now. Hopefully you're convinced of these current flow trends. We're going to replace this resistor with a 100 ohm resistor to feed the base of a transistor directly here. And we're going to ground the emitter as we said. So if we feed a little bit of current into this leg right here, that'll turn the transistor on. That'll allow a very large current to flow through this leg right here. What we have on this leg here is we're just sort of have a black box in this case here, and I'll show you what we're going to put there in a minute. But in a nutshell, we have one end of the so-called black box connected to 9 volts into the black box. And the output of the black box is sort of sitting here waiting to see what it should really do. So for instance, if this side of the transistor is grounded, the transistor will be off. This side of the device will not see ground and it won't be on. In other words, the current just has no place to flow. There'll be no current flow through the device because this side here can't see the return of the ground side of the circuit right there. But if we turn the transistor on, then suddenly this, there will be a conduction path through the collector and the emitter right here. This is the collector and the emitter. And suddenly current will surge through the device. So what we're going to do, we're going to exploit this low current in the base leg able to supply a larger current in this leg here. What we're going to do for the device is we're going to put a buzzer in there buzzer that takes a lot of current to get these things nice and loud. And a motor. You know motors take a lot of current and hair dryers and to turn fans and things like that. And the other thing that we haven't used very much is the incandescent light bulb. These things are those terrible sort of energy wasters that get so hot they heat a filament and glow. They need a lot of current to work. Um, we did replace the 100 ohm resistor here, or uh, the resistor we had in a separate video with 100 ohms. So how much current are we sort of getting into that base branch? Well, Remember that current here, according to Ohm's law, is always V over R. So even in the case here, we're running on a 9-volt battery, forgetting other little voltage drops that might exist because of the transistor. This base current here is never going to be any more than something like 0.09 amps. That's something like 90 milliamps. That's not very much current flowing through there. It's not even 90, is it? It's 9 milliamps. So we're never really putting very much current into that base. There's no way we'd get a buzzer to go, to, to go buzz very loudly, or a motor to turn on, or a light bulb to glow with just nine lousy milliamps. So we really need to have some larger current to go through these, through these devices. Let's put some in and see what happens. So here's the buzzer here. I'll connect the buzzer up here to nine volts. And I'm going to make sure the transistor is off. I'll connect the base line over there. And I'll connect the other side of the buzzer right to that collector line of the transistor in there. So there you go. The buzzer is connected in that device position in the schematic right here. Let's turn the transistor on by taking this line, putting up to 9 volts, and see what happens. See that? The buzzer comes on with a nice loud volume. That's going to take a lot more current than a measly 9 milliamps that we're feeding into the base. How about the motor? We'll connect the one lead of the motor here to the 9 volts. The other lead to the collector of that transistor in there. Here it is. Let's see if we can turn the motor on. There it goes. Of course the motor comes on. You can hear it buzzing there. You can't really see it, but it's buzzing. Turn the motor off. How about those big energy wasting incandescent light bulbs now? They're great for illuminating and reading and stuff. They're a little bit wasteful energy, but they require a lot of current to get that film a nice knot so it glows. Here we go. Let's turn it on. And there we go. Look at that thing glow there. So when the transistor's on, the light bulb glows. So these are some examples of the real power of transistors now. It allows you, with a very small current, oh, my drawing's pretty much wiped out, but with a very small current on the base, you can control a much larger emitter base current. So the transistor acts like a wonderful electronic switch for us. So where this is going now, in the next couple of videos, we're going to go back to the Arduino, because it turns out that we can connect the Arduino to these transistor circuits, and control these devices like buzzers, light bulbs, and motors using software on the Arduino for the following reason. The digital output pins on the Arduino are very nice. As we saw in some other examples here, we can on command in the software tell these lines here when we want them high and when we want them low. But it turns out when they're high, and this is another nice example of the differences between voltage and current, which a lot of people have trouble grasping here. Remember, we have I is equal to V over R. Ohm's law really tells us the difference between these three quantities here. They're in separate positions in the equation even right here. So in the Arduino here, 
these digital lines here, certainly they rise up to 5 volts when on and 0 volts when they're off. They certainly do that. That is true. But you have to wonder then, is it possible to turn on a buzzer just using the Arduino or just a motor or these light bulbs? Can the Arduino turn these on? The answer is no, because although these digital output lines can supply 5 volts, by design they're limited to about 40 milliamps. That's all. So this is sort of like the, the current maximum here. The maximum current an Arduino digital line can pull out, put out is 40 milliamps. And that's just not enough to get this buzzer to go. And it's not enough to make a motor to turn on. It's not enough to get a light bulb to turn on. So what we can do, though, is use the Arduino to turn the transistor base on. Why don't we connect the digital output line of an Arduino to the base of a transistor? The 40 milliamps can definitely turn on the transistor. That's definitely enough base current to turn on the transistor. And when that happens, we'll get a lot of current flow in that collector emitter leg. And so with the Arduino, we can start to control some sort of real-world devices like buzzers, motors, and light bulbs with that transistor as the moderator in there. It'll be great.